Hey guys, um, in this video, uh, I'll be talking about the two things that will make you become a high value designer and also these two things will help you uh, to charge higher. So you, um, if you guys don't know me yet, my name is Errol Chazon and I talk about conversion design and freelance and stuff like that. So yun nga, I also prepared some slides for you guys para at least mas ma-imagine nyo and at the same time mas ma-explain ko yung, yung two things na to. So without further ado, let's go ahead and ipakita ko na yung screen ko. So yun. Okay, so yun nga, um, I'll be talking about these two things that will make you become a high value designer and also will help you to charge more. Now before I proceed with uh, discussing this, um, before that, I want to ask you a quick question or actually quick questions to kasi dalawa. So, yung first is, kung merong dalawang itlog, like for example, nasa palengke ka, kung merong dalawang itlog, merong dalawang tindahan, yung isa nagbebenta ng itlog na $1 and at the same time, yung isang tindahan naman nagbebenta ng itlog ng $5 each egg. So, yung question ko dito sa inyo is, which egg would you buy? And most probably, guys, you would answer me na, syempre yung $1. Kasi nga, mura. ba? So, yung next question ko is, um, by the way, guys, you might you might be asking kung bakit ganito yung example ko. Mamaya, I'll also explain this, ha, bakit relevant yung ganitong example. Kasi yung goal ko talaga is to make sure that you guys would really, really understand the concept. So yun, next next question is yun, if you would if you would be asked which would you prefer to wear on your wedding day? Yung first option is yung ready-made na, na wala kang assurance kung magfi-fit sa iyo yung dress mo or yung or yung tuxedo mo sa wedding mo. Like hindi ka magiging gwapo tingnan, hindi ka din uh, hindi ka din sure na magiging maganda ka tingnan kasi nga ready-made yung ano, yung dress mo or ready-made yung tuxedo mo. Or, you would go to the other option wherein custom-made siya. Like, custom-made in a sense na perfect na perfect fit siya. And, considering na wedding day mo yun, there's a high chance, like 99.9% .9 chance, you would choose the custom-made. Kasi, we really want to make sure na we look super good sa wedding day natin. Kasi, it's just one like once in our lifetime lang mangyayari. So, yun. Now, bakit ako nag-ask ng ganitong questions? Kasi guys, ito yung limiting beliefs ng mga tao. Like, especially if you guys are new sa ano, sa conversion design or specifically when you start offering landing page design or kahit anong offer actually when you start freelancing. Number one na ano mo, limiting belief is Wala kasi akong portfolio eh. Yan yung, ano, yan yung number one. Yan yung number one um, sinasabi ng mga tao. Wala akong portfolio. Kaya mahirap makakuha ng client. The second is, yung design ko hindi maganda as compared to other designers. Kasi nga, mas experience sila, mas maganda yung gawa nila as compared sa akin kasi nag-start pa lang ako. Yan yung second na limiting belief. And the third is, eto yung pinaka ano, eto yung pinakamatinding limiting belief wherein sinasabi nila eh designer lang ako paano makaka-impact yung design ko sa business nila kasi yung ginagawa ko is pampaganda lang or most of the time sinasabi natin na um, makaka-impact yung design ko dahil maganda yung design ko as compared to other designers pero yun nga it, it, it would go back again sa limiting belief na dahil hindi maganda yung design ko kaya hindi din makaka-impact sa ano sa business. So, yun, ba, yun. So, I'll explain bakit ko um ginawa yung example yung dalawang yun. Kasi nga, eto yung perceived solutions natin. Number 1, um I'm seeing a lot of people, especially ano, especially designers din na I'm I'm currently connected with wherein they spend so much time creating samples for ano, portfolio purposes. And yun nga, if we would ano, if we would relate this to ano to the first example wherein yung $1 egg versus the $5 egg, 
Guys, ano yung difference nyo sa ibang designers? Kasi, almost all of the designers are also creating portfolio. So, kung ikaw yung client, anong, anong magiging tingin mo? ba? So, yung magiging tingin mo, ba't ka bibili ng $5 kung merong $1? Kasi nga, almost all of the designers are spending so much time creating samples for portfolio purposes lang. So, yung nangyayari, nakikita ka nila na commodity. Para, ka, para tayong nagiging itlog na $1 versus $5. And if you are if you are a business owner, wouldn't it be in your best interest if you would ano, if you would choose the cheaper um cheaper person to design your ano, to design your marketing collateral, especially yun nga nakakamura and at the same time, kung yung gusto mo lang talaga is aesthetic or magiging maganda yung output, doon ka lang sa mura, di ba? So, yun yung perceived solution natin as designers. And hindi ko naman sinasabi na masama to, hindi ko naman din sinasabi na malito, it's just that merong other way na mas ano mas maganda for us to stand out and at the same time ma-perceive tayo as high value designer and makaka-charge tayo and it's not just creating portfolio and mamaya I'll explain it in a bit okay so yung next solution natin na perceive is more on switching skills and I've also encountered this when I was just starting out um, sa pag-offer ng landing page wherein um, sinabi ko sa sarili ko and at the same time sa team ko na what if maging ano na lang tayo, maging Facebook ad specialist kasi nga, yan yung uso ngayon, madami yung nag offer ng Facebook ads and then mas malaki yung demand when in reality, hindi pala ganun, parang nagiging commodity na din yung Facebook ads especially, especially ngayon sa mga policy ni, ni Facebook mas importante sa mga clients kung alam mo yung policy ni Facebook kung mag Facebook ads ka Pero yun nga, most of the Facebook ads people just know how to run Facebook. So, ganun pa din. If you would switch skills, parang hindi din best interest in your end. Kasi nga, you would not, ano, you would not be expert at anything. Kasi, switch ka ng switch eh. So, yun. And yung pinakamasaklap na solution natin, dahil nga naging commodity tayo, dahil na-feel natin na para tayong nagbebenta ng itlog, yung $1 and $5, um, yung nangyayari is, we choose to charge less. Kasi nga, we want to survive in this business. Kailangan natin ng pera para makabili ng pagkain. So, we choose to charge less. And yun yung pinakamasakla. And, I'm not saying it's a bad solution kasi if you are just starting out, it's good to charge less just to gain experience. But, Kung forever mong gagawin yan, like it choose mo palagi na mag-charge less, then you're not really in in this ano, in this business to make profit, but more on just to get a job. So if you are ano, if you're in the corporate scene, parang nag-transfer ka lang talaga ng ano, ng workplace. Pumunta ka lang sa sa bahay niyo para magtrabaho, pero same pa rin. You are charging less. So, yun. Um Ibabast ko na yung limiting belief na to. Number one, again, let's relate our business to ano, to the egg, yung first example. So yun, if we focus too much on the execution part or the portfolio, people or business people will look like uh, will look will look at us like a commodity. Kasi nga, um, baka baka sinasabi natin na designer eh mas maganda yung gawa ko sa kaysa kay kay sino pa yung maganda um eh mas magawa uh, mas maganda yung gawa ko as compared kay Marlu for example yan yung name ng other designer to be honest not all businesses have the eye to distinguish kung ano yung maganda and ano yung pangit yun yung ano yun yung totoo kaya yung iba parang parang feeling nila yun yung ano yun yung solution to create more portfolio when in reality, hindi yan. At the end of the day, guys, yung business people would buy from you not because of your portfolio, but because of the assurance na magde-deliver ka sa kanila. Again, ulitin ko, ang business, hindi mag order sa inyo ng design just because maganda yung work nyo. Most of the time, yung reason why they want to work with you is because you can assure them that you can deliver. Again, you can deliver. It doesn't mean na it doesn't mean na kailangan maganda 
and it doesn't mean na kailangan din pangit. It's more on assurance na hindi nila sasayangin yung time nila and yung pera nila kasi magdi-deliver ka talaga ng output. Okay? So, yun. Um, the next is yung wedding dress or yung wedding na, na damit natin, dress or tuxedo. So, we want, uh, I, I want you guys to look at it as a business ng ano, like yung business person, yung, yung perspective ng isang business owner, yung clients nyo. So, yun, clients want solutions that could help them grow their business further. Again, isipin nyo, if it's on your wedding day, you want everything to be perfect. So, syempre, if ganun ka-importante, parang ganun din sa business nila. Super important sa kanila, yung business nila. Just like your wedding day. It's, it's special to them. It's special to you as well, kung wedding day mo yan. Pero yung business nila, it's special to them. So, yung portfolio mo, or portfolio natin, guys, wala namang ano, wala namang makakafeel na, shit, eto yung connection ko, eto yung soulmate ko. Walang ganun. So, yung goal natin is to let them see how we designers can help them grow their business further. Now, paano nga ba yung ano? Paano nga ba yung solution? So, number one limiting belief, yung from I don't have a portfolio, to you, to us designers, to learning how our design can impact their income stream. So, ano yung income stream? I've already discussed this inside uh, Conversion Designers Philippines na group. So, tatlo mainly yung ano, yung income stream or yung problem ng kahit anong business model. Number one, it's attracting customers. Like, paano mo, paano mo magagawa na mag-inquire sila sa business. Next is sales. Next is sales. And lastly, uh, making um, their customers buy again. So, yun. As a designer, it's our responsibility or kung gusto natin mag-stand out, we have to be super familiarized with attracting um, um, how our design can impact the income stream. Yung attracting customers, sales, make their customers buy again. Uh, mamaya din, I'll give you examples on, on how um, different design disciplines can impact the ano the first income stream yung attract, uh, attracting customers kasi medyo vague pa din to meron pa din ibang tao na nag ask sa akin eh paano yung design ko makaka ano makaka-attract ng customers paano makaka-attract ng sales or paano makaka make ng ano ng customers buy again from from a business so mamaya I'll give you examples the next ano the next way for us to to somehow tanggalin yung ano yung sasabihin na kasi wala akong portfolio number uh, second is more on giving upfront value to them in a form of audit so ano yung audit um chine-check mo yung say for example sa landing page chine-check mo kung ano yung factors na nakaka-cause na na wala silang ano conversion mainly yung mga sign-ups hindi sila nakakakuha ng maraming email tapos ang mahal-mahal ng cost nila to get an email address. So, titingnan mo yun. So, parang audit siya. Kung baga, kung i-relate natin siya sa ano, sa doktor, parang nag-check up tayo. Chine-check natin kung ano yung current situation nila para alam natin kung ano yung ano, ano yung matutulong natin sa kanila. And usually guys, um, for businesses, if you would offer an audit, yung tendency is that they feel na sobrang custom ng ginawa mo and na feel nila na hindi na need yung ano hingan ka ng portfolio kasi nga you've already given them a ano um, an assessment kung paano makaka ano paano masosolve yung problem nila sa income stream nila so yun uh, the next ano myth is my design doesn't look good as compared to other designers okay so, eto guys, um, I'm not sure if you are familiar with the quote na uh, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So, yun nga. Just because I don't like my design doesn't necessarily mean that my potential clients wouldn't like it. Again, I've mentioned a while ago na most clients doesn't know kung ano yung difference mo sa ibang designer. Like, sa totoo lang, hindi, hindi nila alam yung mga design style. Like, Sabihin natin, maganda nila, o maganda mo yung isang design, it doesn't mean na maganda din ng client mo yung design na yan. 
So why would you why would you bother of doing the guesswork na shit kailangan kong mag-improve ng design kasi nga yun yung gusto ng ano ng client. Like how sure are you na yun yung gusto ng client? 'Di ba? You you are not sure. You are just comparing based on your standards. Hindi sa standards ng clients. So, yun nga, wouldn't you agree na mas maganda kung kung ipakita mo na lang yung ano, yung value mo in a form of an audit as compared to spending so much time creating some things na wala ka namang assurance na papansinin ng ibang clients kasi nga they don't ano, they don't know how to distinguish beautiful as compared sa ugly. Sa totoo lang kasi subjective yung ugly, subjective uh, subjective din yung beautiful. Okay? So may mga artista na maganda mo sila, meron din mga artista na pangit mo sila kahit maganda naman sila for uh, for for other people. So yun, um just because you don't like your design doesn't mean that other people wouldn't like it. So I hope na ano, na debunk yung limiting belief na yan. So the third is eto na yung ano, eto na yung example wherein Paano natin, paano mami-make sure na yung design natin can impact their business? Kung kung like for example, hindi naman pala i-judge yung ano, yung pagiging maganda ng output natin. So more on more on how our design can impact the income stream. So dito sa examples na to, guys, it's more on ano, it's more on for the attracting customers. So number one, if you are ano, if you are a dis- uh, graphic designer, tapos gumagawa ka ng graphics sabi natin for ano for Facebook ads or sabi natin for YouTube na lang for you uh, YouTube nakikita nyo na may mga thumbnails thumbnails and your goal as a graphic designer is to make sure na yung thumbnail na yun sa YouTube would get more clicks so make sure mo na madami yung contrast magaganda yung font and malalaki yung font na mabilis mabasa So yun, you want to get more clicks on their ad while lowering cost. So if you are on the Facebook ad or graphic designer ka for ad creatives for Facebook or for thumbnails ng YouTube, tapos may YouTube ad sila, kung maganda yung ano mo, yung thumbnail mo, tapos medyo nakaka-attract talaga siya ng click, yung nangyayari dyan is yung spending nila sa ad, lumiliit din. So... Technically, you've already impacted how they are attracting customers kasi nga mas dumadami yung click nila for ano because of the gra- uh, because of the design that you created, the graphic design that you created. So yun guys, that's how you can impact their business. It's getting more clicks while lowering their cost. Kasi pag madami yung clicks, naglo-lower yung cost nila. Cost per click in marketing terms. Okay? So that's how you would impact their business. The next is if you are a landing page designer just like me and my team. Number one na magagawa mo is getting more opt-ins. Now ano yung opt-ins? So example, pumunta ka sa isang web page, tapos may nakikita ka na ano na mayroong pinapalagay na email address and then contact information. Um that's called an opt-in. So what you can do is most of the time yung ano yung ginagawa ng clients is that nagbibigay sila ng ebook in exchange of in exchange of giving or getting the email address and also contact information of the person na magsa-sign up para ma-download yung ebook. Now, kung if you're uh, now if you're a landing page designer, the most or the great thing that you can do is make sure na maganda yung ano, maganda yung mock-up ng ebook. Kasi kung magmumukhang ewan yan, sino magda-download yan? Sino yung mag opt in yan? So, dyan ka makaka-impact. And if you're also a landing page designer, make sure na yung call to action mo is just one. Para at least sigurado ka na, mas madami yung opt-in. Again, pag madami yung mag-sign up, madami yung nag-download ng ebook na yan, for example, maglo-lower din yung cost nila. And again, naka-impact na naman yung design mo sa business nila. And if papansin ninyo yung pattern ng ginagawa ko, wala akong linalagay dito to get more clicks, you have to create beautiful designs. So, ginagawa ko dito is um, create designs to get more clicks while lowering their cost. Always ganyan, while lowering their cost, while lowering their cost. Pero wala akong nilagay dito na make your design beautiful. Okay? Hopefully, hopefully valuable to siya. 
Next is mga video editor. Um, one of my friend, good friend, si Dean, um, he's also a video editor and um, I believe na-discuss ko na to sa kanya a year ago or two years ago wherein tinatanong niya ako palagi na Bro, paano? Paano ba makaka-impact yung video namin sa ano sa business nila? Kasi nga, it's more on aesthetics and that's true. So sabi ko sa kanya, Bro, yung goal mo is to be good in storytelling. Kasi yung goal mo is to get more watch time. Kasi kung isa kang YouTuber or isa kang, isa kang marketer na yung pinagkakakitaan mo talaga ng pera is kung madami yung nanonood sa'yo, what's valuable for you is making sure that you get more watch time. Kung baga, mas napapastay mo yung isang, isang person na mas manood ng video mo. So, yun. If you're a video editor, you want to make sure that the, ano, how you structure your video is more uh, is designed or geared towards getting more watch time kasi pag, ma pag mataas yung watch time mas naglo-lower again yung cost ng advertising or anything kasi nga yung valuable para sa YouTube or sa mga video na mag, uh, sa, sa Facebook videos kung nagla-live stream yung importante sa kanila talaga is watch time Watch time, yan yung importante kay Facebook, yan yung importante kay YouTube. So, dyan ka makaka-impact. So, yun lang guys, I hope na na-debunk ko yung limiting belief nyo. And, so yung assignment nyo guys, I hope you could help me out. I want you guys to comment the one takeaway you got from this video. And the next is, if you have any topic you want me to cover, please comment down below as well. So yun, thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.